Hi, it's Kristen with Pratt Scraps here, and I have a couple kind of silly pictures that I wanted to scrap today. Um, my daughter and I went to Crafts Direct in White Park, Minnesota, um, which is a pretty big family-owned scrapbooking store in central Minnesota. Anyway, um, yeah, we did that. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but on YouTube, there's a group of ladies that do different things and film it, and it's funny. And Anyway, one of the things they did was they went down the, f the flower aisle of a Hobby Lobby and then did, like, photo shoots kind of things. So that was this was our take on it um, with it. And I found this set of flowery die cuts. Um, they're from Kaiser Craft, and they're called Wildflower. And I believe I either got them from Paper Issues or I ordered them from a Peachy Cheap um, or Peachy Steals um, deal. I messed around with the last quite a while trying to get the two pictures that have totally different color schemes to work together. I thought the darkest shade on these flowers kind of matched the fl flowers in the bottom picture enough that I could make it work. But let me tell you how hard it is to, to keep a straight face when you're, for one, in public, and there was some kind of bridal show going on this particular day that we were there, so it was extra busy, and in the flower aisle it was busy. And then to just keep a straight face while your daughter's laughing her head off trying to take these pictures and holding the price tags out of the way, and it was funny. It was funny. I'm going to do a little watercolor behind here. I really had no plan except that I really wanted to just document this story just because it was a fun a fun time. And I just ended up I was going to do, you know, just watercolor blotches and I ended up doing the the stripes. And then I just kinda had fun. I just it's kind of weird of those three sets of Prima watercolors that I have, I could not find the right colors. So I went to my um, gelatos and found some greens that match the leaves a little bit. I left those in there. And I'm just really just using them like they're watercolors, just watering them that watering and watering them down until they spread like a watercolor. There's a couple little clumps that kind of get streaky, but I like, they look okay. I liked the look. And that first pink paint that I picked, chose, it really didn't accent that flower in the bottom as much, so I decided to just go with the one photo, which in the back of my head I kind of had all the time. This kind of looked like a an arbor to me. I don't know. I didn't really love that look. Then I decided that stripes were a little bit too much, so got out my white gesso and decided to just go over it. And I'm kind of using a light a light touch to it, so I'm not getting a solid, dense covering over the paint. So I still wanted to see it, but I just didn't want it quite so, so dark. I decided I'm going to go all out now that I had some gesso on there. I'm going to get my modeling paste out. I really like modeling paste. I forget how much I like using it. Just a little texture in the back. And it also does mute the colors a little bit too because it's white. Kind of block some of it out. And then when I was putting my modeling paste away, I re noticed, I'm like, oh yeah, I have these little inklings from shimmers so I got those colors were actually more similar to the colors in the die cuts and I think I used the meet me at sunset the pinkaboo the beats me and then the giddy nope that's not the one I used um oh, it must be giddy about green 
those are the inklings that I use. And if you haven't used these before, they're um, they're solid, and then you put water in them to activate them, and then you can use them just like paint. And they have a nice shimmer to them when they dry. Well, even as they're you're being they're being used. So I just smudge some here and there. They're very light colored. I'm using everything, my hand, the plastic, I just, I don't know. I don't know what look I was going for, just to get some color on there. <laughs> I'm still trying to get that picture. So there I am, putting it in my art journal, and I'm done with it. It's, it will be put somewhere else. I'm going to stop trying. Just do some splatters. That ink is almost the perfect shade of green. I was glad I found that. Yeah, just kind of across the middle. There I'm showing you Giddy about Green, Coral Reef, Pink Boo. I think I missed the first one. Oh, meet me at sunset. Oh, and then I found the purple, that's right, the pugnacious purple. It kind of, it was a really light shade of the um, purple that's in the picture at the bottom, so, yeah. I know I'm liking this background a lot more than I did when I just had the stripes. I'm multitasking here with two hands. I don't like when my splotches have square edges, like where they line up with the plastic or something, so I was just trying to blend that out a little bit. Straight edges, I guess, not square. Now, making sure it's dry enough. I'm thinking I need something else in the background, so I decided to go with this tissue paper accent. And I decide to do a whole strip down this off center, not really down the center, off center. And to get it a size I like. And then I decide, oh, that's great, but I'm going to make it crumpled to give it another bit of texture. So, yeah, I've learned from my mistakes, so I didn't even try to put the ATG on the back of the tissue paper. That has, I have miserably failed with that before. So this worked out just fine. Yeah. I'm going to put my picture on there. And then I grabbed those three dimensional dots um, earlier because I'm a very visual person. And if I, and I knew I wanted to, or during this process I decided I wanted to raise up some of the flowers. Well, if I wouldn't have put those dimensional dots out where I can see them, there's a chance I would have forgotten that that was my plan. So, those are um, from Stampin' Up. They're actually kind of old, and they didn't want to come off the backing very well, but in the end they worked out just fine. I'm kind of strategically placing the flowers so the green parts are all kind of on the outside of the picture. And they match whatever fake flower it is that I'm standing by fairly well. They're not the same flower, but the colors are very similar. So that was kind of, that was work, worked out nice. So I put these three bigger flowers down. And then, see they're kind of sticking for me here. There it goes. And then, I find these two smaller ones. And those I just glue right down to the paper. And then they, so to give it some dimension. So yeah. And then, trying to decide what I'm going to do for my title. I think by this point I kind of have it figured out in my head and now I just have to find the right alphas to to make that title come alive. 
these were sitting next to me, and so I was just checking to see if I had all the enough pink ones to spell out the word flower. These are from um, oh shoot, um, from a citrus twist kit that I got when I was a subscriber. Um, they are called. Oh, they're right here. All right, right here. Called New Day. I knew I wanted the word flower on there. I have some goo dots here from, they're from 2011, I think. And they're horrible. They don't work very well. But then today I did another layout and I used different glue dots that were in a box instead of in that little plastic envelope. And they work just fine. Same brand, same size, just on a roll instead of individually placed. And those look good. Right now I'm behind, right behind where I sit is another table and on that table is a basket with all of my thickers in it. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm, be, I'm turning around and grabbing different letters. And I came across these Dear Lizzie Treasure thickers that I got. I actually picked these up at Tuesday morning for only $1.99. That was a pretty good deal. Um, they're kind of, um, it almost looks like they're decoupaged newsprint that's been, you know, like old, looks old, so it's kind of yellowed a bit. And then um, it has like this clear, crystally sugar glitter <laughs> on top of it. So I end up using these to make out my title. And I think because these flowers kind of looked wedding-ish to me, they, not the flowers I had at my wedding, but they looked kind of wedding-ish to me. And then the way I have them look kind of wedding, like they're on an arbor, like I said. So my title becomes A Walk Down the Flower Aisle instead of the aisle. So. I don't know where I first learned about this idea of putting the thickers on wax paper. I don't know if it was Mercy Tierra or if it was Nicole Jones or who it was, but it was a great idea. So thank you. I use it all the time. I rearranged my workspace where I um, do my scrapbooking and I stand up typically when I scrapbook and my camera was always mounted and it just seemed like it was a little bit too close it would cut off the bottom of my paper and it was frustrating because I would think I was always in in the screen and then I wouldn't be in the right frame and um, so anyway I have a new a little bit new arrangement and the place where I mount my the arm that holds my camera which my phone um, is now just a little bit like Literally, I don't even think it's an inch higher, but it made quite a bit of difference as far as the the filming space that it would do. So um, I'm glad that the whole paper is in in focus. Oh yeah, and I go back and put on some butterflies to accent the diagonalness. <laughs> the diagonal flow of this paper of this layout and then I just decide I didn't want my journaling to be like <sighs> boom there it is so I use this really light gray it's hard to see on camera but in real life you can see it fairly well it's really light gray pen it's a Stedler I think that's how you say that Sted Stead Stedler 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 um light gray Pen. And I'm just saying that, you know, Abby and I were taking pictures. It was a fun memory. And I just put the date on there. That's about it. Thanks for watching.